Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark by Laurie Wyman and starring John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray. There's no doubt about it, in the future, this particular period of civilization will be remembered as the scientific age. And it's the latest scientific gadget the Navy's thought up that sends Captain Povey and Second Officer McClutey hot-footing it to the Ministry of Defence in Whitehall. Good morning. Yes? Uh, Captain Povey and Second Officer McClutey. Povey and McClutey? Hang on, I'll look at my list. No, no, no. Nobody here called Povey or McLutie. You must be in the wrong block. No, we haven't come to see them. We are them. Oh, I see. You're expecting to see somebody else? Yes, Mr. Merivale, the Director of Naval Expenditure. Oh, very good, Captain. As soon as he arrives, I'll send him up to your office. But we haven't got an office. Oh. In that case, you must be in the wrong block. Yeah. <laughs> Look, let, let, let's start again, shall we? Mr. Merivale has an office here, hasn't he? Oh, yes. But you can't have that. He's using it. <laughs> we don't want to use it. We just want to go up and see him. Oh. Well, you can't interrupt him now. Mr. Merivale is not available. <laughs> He's expecting two visitors from Portsmouth. We are his two visitors from Portsmouth. Oh. And how come you've got an office in the next block? <laughs> we haven't. We don't want one. We want to see Mr. Merivale. He's expecting us. We have an appointment at 11 o'clock. Oh, in that case, you'd better hurry. You're late. <laughs> we weren't until we got to you. Exactly. Well, can we go through now? Oh, no. Not until you give me your names. <laughs> Captain Povey and Second Officer McClutey. Oh. You should have said. <laughs> there are a couple of passes here for you. You're to go straight in. Second door on left. You are expected. Come in. Mind how you open the door. The Admiral's right. Oh! Behind it. <laughs> Creeping Ivy Povey, why don't you look where you're going? Oh, I, I, I'm terribly sorry, Admiral. I, I can't apologise enough. That's right, you can't. <laughs> Just as well that doorknob wasn't two inches lower. <laughs> My word, the agony. It's gonna take more than a bottle of liniment to put this lot right. Oh, never mind, Admiral. Stay stood standing up for a bit. We're a chair short, anyway. Right, park yourself over there somewhere, Pervy, and stop twiddling your hat. Now, you know what this meeting's about, of course. I haven't the faintest... Good man, I knew I could rely on you. <laughs> no sense in going over old ground, is there? Mr. Merivale. Yes, sir. I mean, madam. <laughs> Let's get these glasses changed. All we were told was that this meeting is to do with some new form of communication system. Oh, it's leaked out already, has it? Well, it just shows you, doesn't it? I can't trust anybody. <laughs> That's why I've called in the security branch. You've met Commander Weatherby, haven't you, Pervy? how <laughs> I'm 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 Officer McClutey in charge of our communication. Good morning, Commander. Under how do you? Oh, how? Under yes, under a great pleasure, under a great pleasure, under a great top, under a pleasure, under a great top, under yes, under a welcome. Oh, under, stop uh, fighting it, Weatherby. Just nod your head or something. Yeah, under by all, under by all, under by all. Oh, poor Arthur. You can see why he's in charge of security, can't you? <laughs> By the time he's told anyone a secret, it would be out of date. <laughs> now, this new invention is designed to revolutionise naval communications. It provides an instant link between naval headquarters and all ships at sea, no matter where they are. 
With respect, sir, we can do that now with an invention called radio. Oh, you've heard about that, have you? <laughs> well, this is somewhat of an improvement. This machine is in two parts. One part is installed at HQ, and the other part is installed on the ship. It's a combination of computer, electronic brain, and teleprinter. It's called Cecil for short. Cecil? Mm. C-E-C-I-L, uh, computer, electronic, communications. Wait a minute, where did you get Cecil from? Cecil is the chap who invented it. <laughs> And please don't interrupt again, Captain. This is a very serious do. Now, this machine, <coughs> this machine not only sends messages, it codes and decodes them, decides whether the orders are probable, possible, and practical. And if they are, it explains how they should be carried out, where and why and when, by whom and to whom, and then it types them out. Good great. I shan't warn you again, Purvis. <laughs> In addition, it also has a memory bank, which is programmed to contain every bit of relevant information likely to be required for any naval purpose. Any questions? Yes, well, I have to curse. <laughs> Got one question, Mr. Merrivale. When are these machines to be installed? Ah, good question. Good question. <laughs> well. Oh, you're expecting an answer. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I suppose it's all right to tell you an answer. Uh, they're not. They're not to be installed. That's why you're here. I think I'm going potty. No, no, not now, Povey. There isn't time. <laughs> no, we've only got one of these machines so far. So that's where you come in, you see, Povey. We're installing one half of the machine in your headquarters at Portsmouth and the other half aboard HMS Troutbridge. Troutbridge? Precise, precise, precise. Yes, precise, 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 yes. That is the general... Uh, no, no, that's the admiral. Yeah, <laughs> you've, uh, you've grasped the... Uh, you have, you've, uh, you've, uh, you've, uh, you've grasped the... Uh, no, but 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 no, Take it from me, you blasted well didn't. <laughs> well, is that it then? Right, I'm off. Last one to the bar, pays for the round. Cheerio, bye. <laughs> Well, honestly, it's a bit much. A chap can't turn his back for a minute without other chaps interfering with a chap's belongings. But, I mean, this is supposed to be our bridge on our ship, isn't it? it, it to the best of my knowledge, yes. Then a chap should be able to leave a chap's things on a chap's bridge, shouldn't a chap? <laughs> I imagine a chap should. Well, why? Well, a chap can't. Because the chaps who installed this new electronic communications machine have taken down a chap's little cupboard with all the chap's navigational aids in it. Navigational aids cupboard? Oh, you mean that funny little box where you keep your Noddy's book of boats? <laughs> and my little plastic donkey with a string tail that tells me whether it's wet or fine. <laughs> and my set of bus timetables. Bus timetables? What incredible form of navigation requires bus timetables? Mind us. <laughs> Uh, whenever we run aground, I always know the time of the next bus back to Portsmouth. <laughs> of course, I just wasn't thinking. Mr. Murray, sir, Mr. Phillips cannot come in yet, sir. Yeah, I didn't think it'd be much longer before Pertwee wanted to come up and see the new equipment. I know, sir. He's tried about 36 different ways to have a look at it already. Yes, quite. Last time he turned up in a cloth cap and dark glasses with a Swiss roll under his arm and swore blind he'd come to lay the new lino. <laughs> Oh, all right. Come in, Chief. At last. Oh, I mean, I just wanted to check the inside doorknob is working as well as the outside one, sir, and whether it... Ah! It's a bomb. <laughs> no, it is not. What, in, what, in, what, in, what is it? Whenever something new turns up, you always panic, don't you, Pertwee? You know your trouble? You're old-fashioned. So is my old granny, sir, but Grandpa never complains. <laughs> What's this tin can full of mechanical nonsense supposed to do? And is it on our side, sir? Well, well, this bit of it is, but the other part of it is in Captain Povey's headquarters. I knew it wasn't to be trusted. How do you switch it off? It can't be switched off. No matter where we are or how far away, Captain Povey can keep an immediate and constant contact with us. Really? Captain Povey simply tells his machine what we've got to do and where to go, and then our machine tells us. 
But this machine does more than just send messages. It's got stored up knowledge and answers questions. If there's anything we don't know or we aren't quite sure about, all we have to do is ask it. And on this ship, that's going to make it a jolly busy machine. <laughs> oh, how unkind. <laughs> hey, so can it, uh, can it really answer questions, sir? I mean, can we try it out? Well, it's supposed to be all right. Now, let's see. I, uh, I press this switch marked information input. Now, what shall I ask? Uh, something simple. I know. Question. What is a gimbal? There we are. All we have to do is to tear the paper off and there's the answer. It says, uh, gimbals are concentric rings used to keep an object such as a ship's compass in the horizontal plane during the motion of the vessel. I say. <laughs> now, isn't that odd? I always thought the gimbals were those big round brass plate things that chaps bash together in the military band. <laughs> Did you really, sir? Well, now you know why they've installed this machine. <laughs> Look, uh, can I ask you a question, Mr. Muddy? No, you can't, Pertwee. Yeah, but it's urgent. Yeah, possibly, but this machine is designed to give naval information, not tell you what's going to win the 230 at Epsom. <laughs> it's not the question I was going to ask at all, sir. Oh, I apologise. Wh what did you want to know? What's going to win the three o'clock at Brighton? <laughs> Come on, sir, take a look. I think it heard me. Hard luck, Chief. I'm afraid it didn't. These are orders from Captain Povey. It says we're to proceed to sea immediately and stand by to carry out communication tests on Cecil. Oh, nasty. <laughs> well, I couldn't agree with you more, sir. Stop. That's far enough, sir. I beg your pardon, sir. Stay right where you are, sir. This is a security area. No unauthorized persons admitted. Ah, I see. Well, I am Captain Povey, and I am going in there to the new operations room. That you're not, sir. You won't get around me like that. <laughs> no. Oh. State your name and business, please, sir. I just told you I'm Captain Povey, and I am in charge of the new communications trial. Ah, that's what you say, sir, but I'll need more proof than that. Have you got a pass from the officer commanding? I don't need one. I am the officer commanding. Oh, well, in that case, sir, you better make yourself out a pass because you can't win there without one. <laughs> well, now, you listen to me, Sergeant. Sure. Wren, second officer McCooty is in that operations room, so you just open the door and ask her to come out and identify me. Perhaps that'll convince you. Er, uh, it might. Then again, it might not. Still, I suppose it's worth a try. Stand well back, sir, please. Excuse me, ma'am. What is it, Sergeant? I'm very busy. Oh, it's you, Captain Povey. It's all right, Sergeant. I know this officer. Oh, very good, ma'am, if you say so. Carry on, Captain. You can go in. Thank you, Sergeant. <laughs> At last. Now then, second officer McClutie, how soon can we start these trials? Right away, Captain. I've had a position signal from HMS Troutbridge. She's cruising in the test area now and awaiting further orders. Further orders, eh? Ho, 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 ho. Then that's just what she's going to get. Further orders, and then further orders, and further orders, and further orders. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm not only going to put this machine through its paces, I'm going to put Troutbridge through her paces. Right, I'm ready. Switch on, second officer McClutie. Switch on. <laughs> Left hand down a bit, Chief. <laughs> Left hand down a bit, and oh my aching arms it is, sir. Now, straighten her up. Straighten her up? But why, we've been twisting and turning, she'll never be straight again. Steady at that. Steady at that it is, sir. And for the 14th time in the last hour, ship on course, Mr. Murray, sir. Congratulations, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> Blimey, Cecil's at it again. What does old Thunderguts want us to do this time? Sit up and beg? Well, hang on, I, I'll see. Oh, 
proceed to where you've just come from. <laughs> Lummy, where was that? <laughs> I'd forgotten. Well, look, who cares, sir? Point us anywhere, Mr. Phillips. It doesn't matter. Whatever we end up, we're bound to have been there at some time today. <laughs> now, now, don't confuse him, Chief. It's quite simple. All we've got to do is to ask the machine. Now then, uh, information input. Right. Question? Um, Oi, Brainy Bonds. <laughs> Question. Where have we just been? <laughs> Well, what does it say? It says, where you've just come from, loud mouth. <laughs> Pardon? Or in more nautical terms, it says, turn 180 degrees and proceed at 17 and a half knots for 15 minutes. But that's ridiculous. That'll take us back to where we just came from. <laughs> it doesn't listen, you see. Not even when it's written down. No, no, I've got, I've got it now, I've got it now. Uh, left hand down a lot and hold it down for a bit. <laughs> Swing around in a U-turn at tea, sir. I hope it's heading us for home. And a bit of a rest. After six hours of elm twiddling, Pertwee's had enough. Don't let it get you down, Pertwee. You know what Captain Povey's like. He's only trying to get us hot and bothered. And he succeeded, sir. <laughs> More bothered is ever so hot. <laughs> yeah, so is mine, actually. <laughs> Yes, so is the machine, sir. Mark my words, much more of this, and one of those little dolls is going to light up and show tilt. <laughs> but evidently not yet. Fresh signal coming through. Oh, bother. I haven't carried out the last one yet. Now what's he want us to do? It says, proceed at once, luff deeps. Luff deeps? <laughs> Well, where the heck are Luff Deeps? <laughs> oh, that's easy. I can tell you that. Oh, how? I'll ask the machine. <laughs> no, you won't. I will. Sounds like some place in the Pacific. That's where the deepest deeps are. I'll check with Cecil. Uh, question. Proceed, Luff Deeps, where? <laughs> Well, tell us the worst, sir. Yes, I was right. It must be in the Pacific. It says, Luff Deeps, Da -e -ha. The Pacific? <laughs> We've got a sail in the Pacific. What, before tea? <laughs> well, evidently, yes. <laughs> Bridge number one here. Starboard look out here, sir. Leading Seaman Goldstein chat in. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Make me dizzy? <laughs> If I wanted a ride on a roundabout, I'd have gone to Flamble Getley Fair. At least you get a bit of music with it when you're being spun around. <laughs> Men of Arlick, the steam organ plays. Beautiful it is. Fifty-nine choruses and never a wrong note. Unless Guy the Shovel forgets to stoke it, that is. Then the whole lot goes flat. <laughs> Goldstein, we... Sounds like one of your English choirs that's out of practice. <laughs> diabolical it is. Yeah, and I'll sound diabolical in a minute, Goldstein. Get back on duty. How can I? I don't even know what I'm supposed to be looking out for next. We're heading for the Pacific. You're to look out for a place called Luff Deeps. It's in Daiha. Luff Deeps? Never heard of it. How do you spell it? Um, double L U F. Double L? Oh, the double L that's never in the Pacific. It must be in Wales. <laughs> Not that I can remember a Luff Deeps, mind. Dulcie, it's not in. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! I've just tumbled. You're having me on, aren't you? <laughs> Pardon? Fluff Deeps. Isn't in Wales or the Pacific at all? It's your little joke, sir. Goldstein, what are you getting at? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Fluff Deeps is full speed, spelled backwards. <laughs> what? And da -e ha is ahead. Ahead? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Fluff Deeps, da -e ha full speed ahead. And in case you're interested, ite pressifo backwards spells petty officer. <laughs> what was all that about? I don't understand what's going on. But that's hardly unusual. In short, Mr. Phillips, Captain Povey has overworked Cecil, and Cecil has twisted his works. Oh, nasty. <laughs> now what do we do? Well, if I'm a make so bold, sir, if, uh, if, if, if Cecil is twisted backwards, why don't we reverse Cecil? And that'll turn the messages round the right way. All right, then. Throw all the switches the other way and see what happens. 
There you are. Now, let's see uh, what that's done. Uh, question. <laughs> I think we know the answer. <laughs> tell me, which way did Cecil go? Straight up. I wonder where it'll land. <laughs> right alongside, sir, and butter side down. <laughs> yes, quite. Well, since we're no longer under remote control, perhaps I can give an order. Mr. Phillips, right hand up a bit and luff deeps ahead for Portsmouth. Yeah, well, couldn't we luff deeps ahead for Australia instead, sir? Australia? Whatever for? Well, after what's happened to our office, Cecil, sir. What do you think happened to Captain Povey's head? I'm not sure, but I have a feeling we'll find out when we get back. <laughs> And I assure you, gentlemen, the moment we get into that office and see the Admiral, I am going to throw the book at you. We had a feeling you might, sir. Right, I'm the Admiral's flag lieutenant. Attend, up! <laughs> flag lieutenant, I am a captain and I know how to enter the Admiral's office, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting, Admiral. I've got the culprits. Have you now? Well, you better see the M.O. and get yourself sorted out. <laughs> I'll deal with this, Ma Povey. Right, Captain Povey, sir. Leave everything to me, sir. Lie down where you are, sir. The ambulance will be here in a minute, sir. Stretch up, Adam. Flags. Ah. That was my little joke. Oh, ha-ha, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and now I've got another one for you. When that stretcher arrives, lie down on it and carry yourself off. Now then, Povey, what's all this tribe about? Well, it's these three from Troutbridge, sir. They blew up Cecil's. Creeping ivy. Hold that stretch of flags. They're going down like nine pins in here. <laughs> uh, what Captain Povey meant, sir, is that the new electronic communication machine went wrong, sir, and we accidentally blew it up. Oh, they did indeed, sir. And not only at their end, but at my end as well. Oh, you should see my operations room. The furniture is 500 weight of sawdust. It's going to take them six weeks to dig out all the transistors from the walls. And where the main valve went, I prefer not to discuss. <laughs> it was a complete shambles. The whole project has been written off. Oh, well done. Congratulate the fools for me, will you, Povey? No, 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 don't bother. I've got the time. I'll do it myself. Congratulations. <laughs> eh? <laughs> what? Pardon? <laughs> Aren't you going to court martial them, Admiral? They've ruined everything. But they've even taken my new toy. I mean, my new job away. Oh, don't be a nana all your life, Povey. <laughs> Blowing that thing up hasn't taken your job away. It's probably saved it. And mine, and theirs. Pum? <laughs> what? <laughs> eh? <laughs> well, it's obvious, isn't it? If that blasted contraption had worked, they'd have installed Cecil's in every ship in the Navy, and half the officers and men would have been made redundant. What? Starting with you. Stretch your bearers on the way, sir. And you. <laughs> oh, do get out of my way, some of you. My horse is in the 3.30, and I want to watch the blasted thing lose on the telly. It's, what about me, sir? Nobody's going to back you, you clown. You're a non-starter. <laughs> oh, do get out of my way. <laughs> John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray have been computerising The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. John Pertwee was the Chief Petty Officer, Leslie Phillips was the Sub Lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the Number One, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Second Officer McClutey was Heather Chason, the Police Sergeant was Ronnie Barker, the Admiral was Tanya Evans, and his Flag Lieutenant was played by Michael Bates. The show was produced for the BBC by Alistair Scott Johnston. Thank <laughs> you.